said that seven is the luckiest number. Why not? Just seven days, and we're racing again at Kokopa Speedway. And in my estimation, that makes seven a pretty lucky number for all of us. Hey, a good Saturday morning to you. Welcome to Kokopa Speedway's Lap Time Live. Brought to you by Kokopa Casino and by a one-hour air conditioning and heating. Racing Radio, here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. I'm your host, Mike Stanhope, and thanks for joining us today. Hey, we're going to be visiting with Kokopa Speedway IMCA modified driver Russell Allen. Allen and his 23R machine sit second in the IMCA modified standings, just 12 points out of the lead. We'll see what Allen has planned to try and close that gap when we get back to racing in just one week at the Diamond in the Desert. Our next Saturday may be the biggest date of September, out at Kokopa Speedway, but today has some significance, too. A number of drivers and cars set to descend on Kokopa Speedway this afternoon for a test and tune session. One final chance to prepare and make adjustments on the cars for next Saturday's second half opener. We've seen a lot of summer action for Kokopa Speedway Racing Series regulars who've done loads and loads of traveling to out-of-town tracks during the long, hot summer break. Those travels, for the most part, have tapered off the last two or three weeks or so, although a couple of drivers are set for out-of-town action tonight. Imperial's Lance Murray and the 19SB IMCA Modified, along with Yuma's Ty Rogers and the 18 Northern Sport Mod, both up at Ocean Speedway in Watsonville, California, for action in the Pat Pettit Memorial, the biggest paying IMCA race of the year to date. Two nights of racing actually kicked off last night. It'll conclude tonight with the Pat Pettit shootout, and at this stage, Murray finds himself in the position of having to try and race his way into tonight's feature. A mechanical issue forcing Murray out of last night's feature, and at the time, Murray was running in one of the automatic transfer spots. Well, tonight, Murray will try to pick up a spot in the main by racing his way out of the B feature. A related team car note, Andy Obertello in the MRT number 29 finished 11 in last night's main event. He'll start 11th in tonight's IMCA modified main event. And then in the Northern in sport mods, Ty Rogers in the number 8 T. He started inside row number 8, worked his way up to a 7th place finish in the Northern Sport Mod Friday night feature in the process, laying down fastest lap of the race. A Rogers hoping to make that happen again and move up even further in the Northern Sport Mods at Watsonville tonight. One other Cocopa Speedway Racing Series regular also set for out-of-town action tonight, Ramona's Cole Dick in the 77D IMCA modified, headed up to the pass, Paris Auto Speedway. Speedway for action there tonight. A couple of other notes to pass along this morning. The garage at Kokopa Speedway, the new food apparel and supply store in the Kokopa Speedway pits, just about set for opening. Final painting completed. Signs went up earlier this week and stocking continues at a fast pace. The garage was and is a, well, a true labor of love for a lot of people. Uh, numerous Speedway supporters and sponsors donating time and materials to bring it together and make sure you check them out on CocopaSpeedway.com. Meanwhile, there's more happening as well on the new quarter midget track, the new youth track on the east side of the Speedway ground. Saw several big loads of clay delivered over the past couple of days, ready for grooming as the kids track readies for action in the near future. And if you'd like to get in on helping as youth racing becomes a reality here in Yuma, plenty of ways to get involved. For the details, just email to info at CocopaSpeedway.com or you you can call the Speedway office at 344-1563. Well, summer break finally almost at an end. Next Saturday, we'll be recapping the standings in all five divisions, looking at some of the storylines to look forward to as we close in on the, well, the absolutely huge second half of the 2013 racing season, ready for launch next Saturday at the Diamond in the Desert. And that first race back next Saturday will also mark championship night for the IMCA portion of the modified and northern sport mod seasons. Of course, both divisions will be competing on into the fall and winter for the Cocopa Speedway Track Championship and also for a fall series championship as well.
Up next here on Lap Time Live, we're ready to talk racing with IMCA modified driver Russell Allen, and he is set to join us next here on Racing Radio, Kokopah Speedway's Lap Time Live, presented by Kokopah Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. Back with more in just a moment here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. Kokopah Casino is your football headquarters every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday night with all the football you can have. Plus food and drink specials. Sundays beginning at 12 p.m. and Mondays and Thursdays at 5. All patrons enjoy $2 domestic drafts and well drinks till midnight and half price appetizers till 10 p.m. Plus Monday night football sports bar drink specials inside Coke Bar Casino Sports Bar during the game. The only place to watch football this season is Coca Bar Casino. Live the rush. your business while you're out on the road. Sign Pro has vehicle magnets on sale through the end of September. 12 by 24 inch magnets are normally $75 per pair, but they're on sale for $65 a pair through September. You just can't do better. The Sign Pro Sign. America comes to Sign this is Russ Clark. Your vote counts in our community, and the candidates are counting on you to get out and vote. I'm providing an opportunity to help you decide which candidate best deserves to serve you and the Yuma community. All six Yuma City Council candidates will join me on my show, Outlaw Talk with Russ Clark, this Monday, September 23rd at 6.30 a.m. for a one and one-half hour debate. Tune in to ask questions or just tune in to be informed. That's this Monday, 6.30 a.m., right here on Outlaw Country, a.m. 1400. Hi, I'm Russ Clark, and I've got a new home on your radio dock. Tune in Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for Outlaw Talk live and local from 6 to 8 a.m. Outlaw Talk is a great forum for local, state, and national issues, ranging from immigration to gun laws and everything in between. I'd love to take your calls, too. You can call 782-4321 and share your thoughts. It's Outlaw Talk on Outlaw Country, 6 to 8 a.m., Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I hope you'll join me. Save the date for the 33rd annual U of A Alumni Drive for a Million Golf Tournament. Hit the course on Tuesday, October 1st at the Country Club. Check in at noon for 1 p.m. shotgun start. The tournament is a four-man scramble and singles are welcome too. Lunch will also be provided. Sponsors and teams are needed. If you're interested or have questions, please call Chris Thompson at 928-343-1694. Save the date for the 33rd annual U of A Alumni Drive for a Million Golf Tournament on October 1st. First. On approved credit through AHSC, 36 months lease, 3500 down, excludes tax license, 595 exclusion fee, 475 dock fee, 15 cents per mile, or 12,000 miles, expires 93013. It's the model year end event going on now at Yuma Honda. The 2014s are arriving, so save on the 2013s with zero down and 0% financing available. Drive new 2013 Civic LX sedans with automatic for only $119 a month, plus a huge selection of used vehicles. And Yuma Honda has lenders available to help you with your financing needs. Yuma Honda, 1190 East 32nd Street or YumaHonda.com. This is Russ Clark. Your vote counts in our community, and the candidates are counting on you to get out and vote. I'm providing an opportunity to help you decide which candidate best deserves to serve you and the Yuma community. All six Yuma City Council candidates will join me on my show, Outlaw Talk with Russ Clark, this Monday, September 23rd at 6.30 a.m. for a one and one-half hour debate. Tune in to ask questions or just tune in to be informed. That's this Monday, 6.30 a.m., right here on Outlaw Country, a.m. 1400. Crossroads Mission serves over 300 meals a day, and they're running low on many food items. There's some days when Crossroads doesn't even have enough meat, bread, or milk to feed those who come to them for help. Their wish list includes mustard and mayonnaise, rice and ground beef, and milk. Please drop items off at the Crossroads Kitchen at 944 South Arizona Avenue. If you'd like to organize a food drive, call Barbara Rochester at 580-4482. Community Matters to Z93 and Outlaw Country. Save the date for the 33rd annual U of A Alumni Drive for a Million Golf Tournament. Hit the course on Tuesday, October 1st at the Country Club. Check in at noon for 1 p.m. shotgun start. The tournament is a four-man scramble and singles are welcome too. Lunch will also be provided. Sponsors and teams are needed. If you're interested or have questions, please call Chris Thompson at 928-343-1694. Save the date for the 33rd annual U of A Alumni Drive for a Million Golf Tournament on October 1st.
No matter what type of air conditioning or heating help you need, schedule some help from One Hour Air Conditioning. Ready for the season? One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating can help. No AC at all? One Hour can help. Need help upgrading your old inefficient system? One Hour can help. Now's the time to schedule your annual air conditioning safety inspection for just $59. Call One Hour today at 783-4242. Some limitations and exclusions apply. Real opportunities don't come around every day. Hi, this is Russ Park, and I want to tell you about an opportunity that won't last long. El Rancho Encantado is a spectacular development located in the foothills at the base of Telegraph Mountain. Build your home and park your RV on one of these lots with underground utilities, fencing, and landscaping. Prices have been reduced thousands of dollars on the last few remaining lots. Act fast, they won't last long. Call Ed Sexton or Brooke Holmes at El Rancho Encantado right now to make an appointment. 342-3281. El Rancho Encantado. This is Jan. This is Timmy. I'm interested in the Corolla. Timmy, how old are you? Nine and three quarters. Oh, why the Corolla? Are you kidding? Over 80% of Corollas sold in the last 20 years are still on the road today. And APRs are so low, I figured I might as well make a down payment now. Who taught you about low APRs? Some things you just know. Kids grow up so fast. Get Corolla, the car you can count on, right now at your Toyota dealer. Hurry in today and get amazing deals and low APRs on the advanced, affordable, and always reliable Corolla. To learn more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on Pope U.S. vehicles and operation registration statistics, MY 1993 through 2012 as of October 2012 includes matrix models. Alexander Toyota in Yuma. Or for more information, please log on to Toyota.com. Toyota. And welcome back to Racing Radio, Coca Cola Speedway's Lap Time Live. Brought to you by Coca Cola Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. And one of the drivers we're looking forward to seeing when racing resumes in just one week. On the phone with us now, Brawley's Russell Allen, driver of the number 23R IMCA modified. And good morning to you, Russell. How you doing? Hey, pretty good, Russell. Uh, just one week away. You uh, champing at the bit to get back to action? Oh, I have been. I haven't been able to race much this summer, and I've really been looking forward to going back. What has your uh, summer break been filled with? Uh, a lot of work on the car or, or your job in the ag industry? <laughs> Actually, a little of both. Uh, I went to Paris once and destroyed the right side of the car, so put a whole new body on it, wrapped the car, went back to the top of the grand, and got tore pretty good over there as well. And, and grow a lot of alfalfa seed in the summertime, and it takes a lot of walking, so... Did a lot of that as well. Yeah, taking notes of uh, of that action you had over at Paris, that that was a pretty bad incident you were involved in. Uh, no, um, mostly cosmetic stuff. Uh, I kept racing, but I think somebody decided they needed to uh, be under the corner better than or more than I needed to, and kind of reared me and knocked me in another car, and, and I wheel hopped him and basically tore the right side of the car off. But I ended up stopping because I overheated more than anything. 10-4 on that, uh, and one of the things that uh, all drivers have to uh, confront sometimes in terms of on-the-track competition. So so uh, you've got the car back together, uh, a lot of adjustment work, or you know, pretty well satisfied with where you were set coming out of the uh, second half, or out of the first half, excuse me. No, you know, new car, um, I still only have about, well, seven races on it now, but it's a lot different than the other one, so I'm still trying to find the, the sweet spot for it, but... Uh, I'm happy with the, the way it's been running. Uh, it was running real well at Costa Grande before I got wrecked, so I think we should be better in the second half. Looking at the uh, first half of the season at Coca Paw Speedway, how, how would you self assess that first half? Um, ups and downs, I guess. Uh, you know, Lance and I have been in a pretty close points battle most of the year. Uh, I was gaining on towards the end. I think I took a, a one point lead, and you know, I was running real well. and. And uh, in that last race, I ended up getting wrecked and, and lost about 10 points to him. But, you know, I, I was starting to get better results with the MRT. I'd already made my mind up to, to go to the Shaw. And did really well with the Shaw. I think the first four races, five races, I was, you know, fourth or third. Um, didn't quite get close to victory lane yet, but uh, we're doing better. Not, notwithstanding that uh, one incident towards the uh, end of the first half, uh, a lot of consistency yeah 
Yeah, unfortunately, it's not uh, consistently winning, but uh, top fives aren't bad. Consistency certainly counts uh, towards going for that uh, going for that season championship. Uh, and speaking of season championships, we make note of your 2010-11 Cocopa Speedway season championship and the Pro Stocks. Now, knowing you've won a championship here before, uh, that's got to give you confidence going forward in this year's modified chase. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the first year of the modified, uh, I really wasn't doing very well. Uh, really tough car to drive. Um, but, you know, having done it before and knowing what it takes, I mean, obviously you got to finish up front to get victories, but being there every night, um, you know, having a, a car that will finish every race and, and, you know, run well is certainly important as well. You got your uh, start uh, back around 2008 over at Imperial. Uh, some significant results in the Pro Stock Division there. Uh, some early and continued success in the form of several trips to uh, Victory Lane. Had to be uh, somewhat bittersweet when the uh, track closed over there. Uh, I didn't catch that. Can you repeat that, please? Uh, it had to be somewhat bittersweet uh, considering the success you had over at uh, Imperial when the track closed up shop over there. Yeah, I, I, I really do miss that track. I mean, uh, luckily, you know, Yuma was opening right at the same time, so we weren't left without a home. But it, Imperial really suited me really fast. Um, you know, not real tight corners. You could just really drive her in there and let her eat. And it was a lot of fun to drive, and I really miss that place. You uh, you carry a uh, battle scar of sorts uh, from over there, uh, broken wrist while driving your dad's car one night, if uh, memory serves. Yeah, yeah. Um, he had a problem with that car, and uh, it spun him a couple times the same spot, and you know, we just we never could get it figured out. And and I was running for the championship, and I, I broke a transmission, I think, in hot laps or something, and, and he said, "Jump in my car." And, I was running well, running second, and she just snapped on me in the front of about six cars. And before I could even blink, I, you know, I think someone caught the left front and took my wrist with it. It was pretty bad, you know. My wrist was displaced. I think about it, an inch and a half or so, with wow. a couple plates and screws. And but no worse for wear. It still works. Uh, that's that's what's important. Is is that the kind of incident that gives you any pause at all going forward, or was it just something that happened? You immediately put it behind you. Um, you know, it's, we're all human, so pain, pain is what reminds us that we can't get hurt. Uh, it, it took a little bit. Um, I think over the summer I raced in Barona and Paris a couple times, and I think I won in Paris. And it kind of helped to race it, you know, and you know, I always get a wreck, and, and uh, you know, just put it in the right place and you'll be okay. So it, it doesn't, now it, it doesn't cross my mind. I stopped wearing the brace a while ago, so I think that kind of helped to not remind me about it. Uh, indeed. Uh, you mentioned Paris again. Uh, we note Imperial again. Your experience is there. Any any things that come out of tracks like that that you've been able to apply at Cocopa Speedway? Are we talking about Paris or Imperial? Uh, both, actually. Um, note, noting the differences in the tracks, of course. Yeah, um, I think Paris and, and uh, Imperial run a lot more. I mean, the track uh, configuration is different. Paris is more of a pitch-and-go type of track, but they like to keep a heavier track and and Imperial was the same way. I mean, you couldn't hardly make that thing dry quick. And, you know, going over to, to Yuma, which, you know, was notoriously dry quick, it, it took a little while to get used to. Um, but I can honestly say that the more I drive this quick, I, I understand that, you know, the best guys finish in the front. And to be able to say that you're a good, you know, good racer on the slick track is kind of a... Uh, achievement of sorts. So I, I actually, you know, I'd probably say that I enjoy Yuma as much as anything. Uh, all about continuing improvement within a particular division. Yeah. In 2011, 2012, that was kind of a year of transition uh, coming out of the Pro Stocks and into the Modifieds, uh, a IMCA Modified feature win last October, which I know had to feel good. But what was the uh, biggest adjustment for you in making that change in class? Um, really just the speed and driving in traffic. Um, you know, the, the Pro Stocks are a really fun division. I wish guys, you know, had more interest in the class and we could have a strong division there as well because they're a lot of fun to drive. Um, but, we, you know, the tours we had seven, eight, nine cars, and, you know, I usually ran towards the front, so you might have to pass one or two guys at night. Um, modify it. You're just always in traffic. Uh, cars are really dirty. Um, I think people, especially guys new to the division, have a, a really tough time with car control. And if you start in the back, you, know, you just sometimes end up with a long night. So I would say that was probably my biggest adjustment was, you know, just learning to set passes up 
uh, truck the car and, uh, you know, be able to come through traffic. We're uh, getting set, of course, for the second half of the racing season, just uh, one week away from today. Uh, what are your particular goals for the second half? And, and I'm thinking that's probably an easy question. Well, you know, I'd love to get a track championship with the, the IMTA. Uh, Lance is going to be really hard to beat. Um, so I'm not really, you know, if I don't get a championship, it's not going to be a huge letdown because I, you know, obviously got beat by a really skilled racer. Um, I might get some more victories. Um, I just, you know, keep getting there, keep it close, run second, and, you know, I just want to get back up there, get back in victory lane more. So I think that would be my main goal. Uh, you certainly knocked on the door more than one time, and uh, as we've seen in the Modifieds, uh, as well as the Northern Sport Mods and in the uh, other divisions, uh, it wouldn't be a breakthrough win, uh, again, given that feature win last year, but, but nevertheless, it seems like just about every week out, uh, somebody's able to step up, and uh, you sound confident that it's going to be you. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, especially, um, I found some things in my older car as, you know, I was transitioning into the new one, uh, that I wish I'd found earlier. Um, new chassis seemed to suit me pretty well, and I think I'm going to find some more speed. In the, you know, especially this practice day, I'm, I'm hoping to pick up on a couple things, and, and I really think that we're going to be there uh, come the start of the season. Well, we're certainly uh, going to look forward to seeing you in action, Russell. And, of course, we wish you, uh, along with all the drivers, of course, lots and lots of luck. I uh, want to ask how you fit racing uh, and the prep time uh, involved in it uh, into your life time-wise. Uh, we noted you work in agriculture, sun up to sundown, so to speak, and uh, we all know what the time commitment is to racing. How do you balance off the, the challenge of doing both? It is tough. Um, makes home life a little difficult at times with a girlfriend, and uh, she, luckily she's good. She understands. Uh, she knows I love it, and I think that that's just the way that you make the time. Is you love it. It's your passion, and if it takes till ten thirty or eleven o'clock at night, three nights in a row, you just kind of get it done. Um, and my dad, he's been really good to me. Um, we built a shop kind of in our shop, um, so that. If there's a lull, if you're waiting for something, um, you can run in and, and, you know, get 30 minutes of work done or an hour of work done. Um, and that really helps out. I don't know that I'd be able to, to balance both out if I, you know, couldn't squeeze that in. None of us would be doing this without the uh, support of loved ones and family and friends. And uh, yeah, easy to say thank you to them because it does mean so much to all of us. Um, insofar as racing is concerned, uh, we talked near-term goals for the second half. But where would you like to see yourself in, in five or ten years? Um, I think that when I first got into racing, I, I kind of had bigger aspirations of being able to go and do different things. But um, becoming more involved in my work and kind of transitioning between my father and I, um, I think the realization comes about that I'm, I'm going to be a regional racer at best. Um, you know, might get to travel once in a while, but if I could run Yuma consistently and, you know, get a couple track championships, um, maybe win a couple races at, at other tracks that are, you know, running in the winter time or whatever, that would be an accomplishment to me. But just being able to go um, and do something I love nearby is, I think, benefit enough for me. I think all of us, uh, just just the opportunity and the ability to uh, be involved uh, says it all right there. You get a uh, front row view uh, just about every week of action at Cocopa Speedway of action that has been off the charts incredible all year. Uh, any words that you would pass along to the casual fan who's uh, not seen you in action as of yet? Um, come out and watch it. Um, I, I still think that the modifieds do put on the best show, um, especially with the, the inverts. You know, the guys that are, are leading points, we're always back in the middle. Um, we're going to start 11th, 12th, and if you're going to win the race, you're going to have to come through traffic. So that means you're going to have to pass at least 10 cars. Um, and it's a beautiful facility. Um, you know, Greg's done a wonderful job since he's come on, um, made some really great improvements. The, the lighting's good. The views are great. Um, I, I don't think you could ask for a better facility to come to. Well, certainly glad to have you uh, participating at the facility in that on-track capacity. Russell, I know it uh, takes a lot of people uh, to help make it possible for you to race. Any acknowledgments you'd like to pass along this morning? Well, I, you know, first and foremost, my my father, um, he puts in a lot of time and helps me out financially, and my mom is always there to support me. So those are kind of my two biggest. And 
and my girlfriend um, Ashley, she's great. She you know supports me and, and lets me do what I you know what I love to do. And um, Eddie Glenn Reed, who I think he he won a lot of races over there. He we bought one of his old cars. That was actually the car I broke my wrist in, and, and he came around because he wanted to see his old car run, and, and he stuck around. Uh, really appreciate his help. He's been great. He, the Maris, um, I've learned a ton from them. Um, Lance and Aaron, really great people. Um, they built my first modified, and you know, I want a feature in it. And I've learned so much from the two of them that you know, I, I don't think I can thank them enough. And I've had a couple people. Um, Oscar Dorte comes around and he helps me when uh, time permits, and you know, he's been a big help. And my friend Justin will be, and he's in the Navy, so um, he, you know, he lives in San Diego, and he comes when he can. Um, so there's just, you know, there's been a couple of people that have helped me that I'd I like to thank as well. Well, on top of all of that, I want to pass along a thank you to you, Russell, for joining us this morning here on Lap Time Live. Oh, my pleasure. All right. Best of luck to you. We look forward to uh, seeing you, if not at practice this afternoon, uh, certainly next Saturday when the season resumes. And thank you so much once again. All right, thank you. Russell Allen in the number 23R IMCA Modified. He sits second in the IMCA Modified points as we get set to go racing next Saturday at the Diamond in the Desert, Coca-Cola Speedway. You are listening to Racing Radio Lap Time Live, presented by Coca-Cola Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. Hey, other happenings ongoing around the complex of facilities that include Coca-Cola Casino and Coca-Cola Speedway. And in with us once again to talk about them, here's Anna Cor. Good morning to you, Anna. Hi, good morning, Mike. Well, we have two events this weekend, plus I want to highlight a couple big events coming up. At Wild River, catch the action of UFC 165, Jones versus Gustafsson. That's inside the Wild River Sports Bar and Lounge, and Chico's Riff performs live following the fight. Also on Saturday at Cocopa Casino, it's Comedy Night with the world-famous Comedy Machine featuring headliner Linda Landry and special guests Polo and Jerry Wynn. Now, there's two shows, 7.30 and 9.30. General admission tickets are $10, VIP 15. Call 1-800-23-SLOTS for more information. And remember, you must be 21 years or older to enter. I also want to highlight some other big upcoming events. The Native American Day Concert and Fry Bread Festival is Friday, September 27th on the Casino Lawn. Gates open at 5. Let the Music Play singer Shannon will be performing along with performances by Southern Scratch and Cocopa Bird dancers the event is free to attend and the cultural celebration is coming up saturday october 12th it's another free event taking place on the west reservation that's from 11 a.m to 4 p.m and the Easton Corbin concert, it's a Bridget's Gift fundraiser, is the same day, just later that evening. So, again, that's Saturday. The gates open at 5 p.m. and the concert starts, uh, well, actually, there's a barbecue and then the concert starts. You can purchase your tickets by logging on to CocopaResort.com. And I will keep you updated on these and more as the weeks follow. Thank you very much, Anna. And again, we remind you that information on all of those items and more is available at cocapod.com. Plus, further information on the second half of the racing season available just as easily. All you got to do is stop in at www.cocapaspeedway.com. And while you're doing that, hey, make sure to stop on over at Facebook and like us there as well. Now, remember, advanced racer registration as well as online ticketing for you race fans is now available through CocopaSpeedway.com. Just one more way to make your visit to Cocopa Speedway that much more easy and convenient. Well, I guess today we can say that the white flag flies just a one week to go. But this time, instead of checkers, it's going to be followed by green as we get set to go racing next Saturday at the Diamond in the Desert, Cocopa Speedway. You've been listening to Lap Time Live, presented by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. We'll be back with more a special race day edition next Saturday morning, 11 a.m., here on Outlaw Country, a.m. 1400.